Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. But nonetheless, they kept on looking. Hello, Internet. Today is November 4th, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. On today's show, we're going to talk everything from Minions to, I don't know, London Bridges Falling Down, what? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Gotham helping Fox. I don't know. We'll talk about stuff. Off. Uh, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I'm Malango at Rambling Mango. And as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. That's How's right. Fresh off of my trip to Buffalo, New York, to watch some professional wrestling professionally. Nice. Yes. Speaking of New York, we have from the other end of New York, Mad Mike. Yeah, that's me. I'm excited because... The Minion showed me a trailer that had one word in it, and I was more excited than anything that DC has announced in their movie line. <laughs> Is it a yellow fruit? Uh, banana. Banana. Yes, yeah, speaking of the trailer of the week, Minions. Um, interesting conversation came up uh, that I was listening to on another podcast talking about matching Minions up against the other spinoff uh, from... Uh, what is the Madagascar movies? That spinoff being the Penguin. Oh, uh, no. Whatever, the Penguins movie. And they're putting these movies up head to head. And it, the vote was kind of swayed that Minions will blow the Penguin movie out. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 I don't even know what the Penguins of Madagascar are. I, I Okay. <laughs> you don't see, you don't see the Penguins of Madagascar like t-shirts in Kmart like you do the Minions. I, I would rather see a DreamWorks movie about the penguins of Pittsburgh. Precisely. <laughs> I would rather see that. You see like an adorable little Evgeny Malkin saying, I make score! And that's it. And they just talked in Russian for this. Or it. just to see Evgeny Malkin say, I make score, and, and that's adorable too. Yes. Well, in their defense, I mean, this was, they already kind of had a spinoff where it went to Nickelodeon television. Right, mm-hmm. and then I so in the comparison, the numbers and stats, it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up. I think our demographic really likes the minions, and I know that children liked the minions. They were funny, you know, they're the characters. But coming from Nickelodeon, you have a whole demographic where that's already been spun out. Mm-hmm. I'll just it'll be interesting to see the numbers how they compare. But as for me, I would rather go see bananas. <laughs> Plus, this trailer. This trailer was awesome. I thought it was very simple. Yes. You, know, it, you saw the, the dinosaur going in, <laughs> like where they just picked the the biggest minion. Um, I, I, I don't know. I thought it was a. I thought it was a very simple, nice, nicely done uh, preview. Um, yeah, I was just, I was looking up the numbers real quick. I wanted to see how much uh, Despicable Me Despicable Me Two brought in. Um, but it wasn't well, able... me too was huge. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out if that roll off will help. I, I thought it was interesting that uh, they didn't really show. I don't remember. Do you guys remember what the uh, what the the number that they threw up? Uh, like the BC number that they joked about? Yeah, I just saw it. Just popped up. It was a uh, 42 BG before group. Before group. <laughs> so because it says so, a prequel. Yeah, so it's interesting. I know. I mean, I already saw that Steve Carell is on the list. Yep. Um, he's not listed as like the first. Character. He's not. He's not. He's not going to be a major character. This yeah. is the intro. This I think it's going to be all leading up to when they finally do me. Uh, Sandra Bullock is actually a top credit on this. Yeah, which is interesting. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Like we said, uh, I think we're all on board with with bananas. But uh, 
<laughs> speaking of speaking of the weekend box office, uh, I would say a lot of people slipped. Uh, Nightcrawler was the big one that came out this weekend. Um, that one with Jake Gyllenhaal, I I saw the preview like I said last week. This movie looks like it's good. It also looks like it's kind of creepy and kind of a mind screw. I heard from um, a friend friend of the show's, uh, Justin Kanaki. I think he was reviewing it on Twitter mm-hmm. a little bit. And he said, you know, it was a very well done, well shot movie. You're not going to feel good after it. Yeah. And I think that is portrayed in the gross. It pulled in. It came in second to Ouija. Um, not by much, but the, both movies crazy. came in about 10 million, 10, that, 10, that, that your top movies are 10 million. Like, like when they, when they have this dip, like it, mm-hmm. it shocks me, especially after we've been looking at numbers, like 80 million for opening weekends over the summer and everything. And now we're like down to, uh, 10 million, you know? Well, it also was Halloween weekend. Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, the- I mean, it, if, if I'm good, do something on Halloween, it's going to be doing a movie marathon it's in my house. It's Halloween weekend of uh, the high school football playoffs started. Um, yeah. I mean, I know, that, I know that's parties. a big deal around here. So, I mean, I I, know you, got, you got parties on top of that. Plus. Yeah. I mean, to put in perspective, the average opening weekend for an average movie is around 34, 34 mil. Really? So, I mean, that puts in the perspective. Like, yeah. Yeah. And these are both second, second week movies. Um, wait, no, no, not second week. Nick Crawler's new. That's right. Yeah, that color's new. Uh, Fury is out there. Gone Girl. Like, yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. I thought it was funny that the uh, Saw 10th anniversary scratched barely nothing. And by nothing, I mean 650,000. Yeah, man. Man, that's nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, it just barely beat out Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I mean, they did. They did. In their 18th week on the list, it seems. Or no, yeah. no, no, not their 18th week. That's that's where they were last week. Their, oh no, yeah, they've the 14th. Oh, their week. 14th week. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm part of me hopes that they'll just re-release Guardians around Christmas just to say screw you, DC. I want to. We can double dip on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, it's the Titanic of of Marvel movies. Um, I, I did. Well, I, 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 think that'd be <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, this. I think it... that'll also be Age of Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> I um no, it'll be when they put part one and part two of Infinity War together. Oh, oh God! There yes, go. um, yeah. I uh, you're gonna be in the movie for you're gonna be in IMAX here for six hours just watching oh, everything. Yeah. I we we went on such a tangent. I forgot what my point was gonna be. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I I can't wait until we see. Um, because I don't know about you guys. When Avengers came out, I did the whole Marvel movie marathon thing. They had yeah. like the the six movie arc, and I was in a theater for twelve hours. It was amazing. I, I oh can't, my god! I hope they do that for Age of Ultron too, because guess who will be doing that? They have to do it by phases, don't they? Like they yeah. like they are, there's gonna be like let's go see phase one, let's go fa- see phase two. Like that's no, they're gonna have to. Right? That's pretty tremendous. That's insane. Sork, I I have the collection of the of the phase one Blu-rays. That's the suitcase that has the Tesseract in it. Nice. Yeah. Wait till they give out the passes for the entire weekend, where it's. Just to watch all the Marvel movies. <laughs> Friday night till Sunday morning. Ah, uh, that would be good. Uh, that would be disturbing. good. Disturbing. Hey, now you see me too. Oh, wow. Yep. Um, now, this is the movie about the magicians that pull a big heist, and uh, it's not entirely, the, and the Hulk is involved somehow. And, uh, <laughs> but no, no, it's, it's, it's pretty, I, I enjoyed the movie. I finally got to see it when it came on HBO. Um, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it. I, I like to see that they're doing second one. I think they left it kind of wide open for, for doing something. Although there was a lot of mystery and there was a bit of a swerve in the first one. So I wonder how they, they kind of top that bit. Maybe this is the next Ocean's Eleven. Well, yeah, I mean, it quite possibly is. Uh, you know, the two big stories, um, Daniel uh, Ratcliffe, uh, I probably butchered his name, sorry. No, uh, that's right. That's right. Harry, Harry Potter, um, he's going to be this, and he's actually going to be probably the enemy that they, they go up against. So I think that's interesting. I think that's I, I hope I hope his name in the movie is Tom Riddle. 
I know they can't do that <laughs> legally, but just like he should use it as a pseudonym or something. Just it'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, for the kind of movie that it is, I mean, it is just a fun movie. Uh, so I, I don't know. I'm 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 on board with that. I think it'd be I think it'd be interesting. Um, hey, so Christian Bale. I am Batman. No. Uh, he keeps flip flopping, but I guess it's not really flip flopping because he has definitively said he's out. So here's before a pretext or out, out of the uh, Steve Jobs movie, right? Yeah, Steve Jobs movie. Um, so I had heard uh, on another story that came earlier in the week, uh, or actually, I think it released on Friday. Where uh, the other Steve wasn't wasn't bah, wasn't oh, yeah. uh, his character was supposed to be played by Seth Rogen, or at least talks were on board, and there was a lot of controversy about would those two really be able to get along. I don't know how much. It's just interesting that you know that released on Friday, and then this week we hear that that he's out. I wonder if there's anything to stand on that that was a cause and effect. Super serious actor going up against what some might portray as, I mean, Seth Rogen is, when he, when he does his like, uh, like interviews and stuff, he comes off very serious. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think he's a character actor. And I think the character roles that he plays are what we see. So. Um, I'm sorry. If, if Leonardo DiCaprio can work with Jonah Hill to make the awesome Wolf of Wall Street movie. Christian yeah. Bale should suck it up and deal. Well, they, the, I, the, the, yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree because the argument was that Jonah Hill couldn't do that kind of movie, and he proved that all wrong. So, yes, to say that Seth Rogen could not act serious, yeah, and I don't to be between um you know Christian Bale and Fassbender. I, I kind of I was looking at the side by side. Uh, Christian Bale definitely looks a, a, like I could see him looking more like Steve Jobs. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I I don't think you can have the argument of who looks like Steve Jobs. Um, yeah. I, I, I there's been plenty of movies. Like I really don't. Think... Especially if you're starting that argument with Christian Bale. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I think there's a lot of makeup magic. I think there's a lot of uh, suspension of disbelief. Like we do that because That's we're so true. familiar with 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 with, with uh, you know guys like Steve Jobs. And I'm like, well, it's got to look like Steve Jobs, or I'm completely going to be taken out of the movie, right? Um, have you ever looked? Oh, geez, I'm trying to remember. And uh, what's the last one I saw? You ever see the 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 uh, bi- biography movies where like you know they'll show like the people next to the picture of the real versions of them? Oh yeah, like the mm-hmm. uh, Saved by the Bell thing. That kind of the, uh, well, no, because well, those kids look nothing like exactly, the exactly. Now they didn't really have a budget to do the full, full, full on casting. I'm sure to find a, but I mean, again, you can only get so far with some of those. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, yeah, well, you you made a good point. Just the makeup alone, there's a way that they can kind of sneak around with that. Um, and or you just, or you, just say, guess, you just step aside and say, "This is our representation of this person." Yeah, Jesse Eisenberg does he really look a lot like uh, uh, Zuckerberg? This is very true. I mean, he just kind of like he's another geeky guy. So that can. Do... I think we I think we like that movie. Because of the way he portrayed uh, Zuckerberg as just that that persona, so I agree. I'm going to skip around with these stories because I think we're going to talk a lot longer about some of them than others. Uh, a movie that I enjoyed as a summer flick, I think I think it came out Mike or sorry, did it come out this year or last year? What's that? Or, which, which one? Uh, Olympus has fallen. Olympus has that fallen. Was, that, that was, was a couple years ago. Yeah, because it's already on. It? I think I saw it on HBO or something already. Or, or I might have seen it on Netflix. That was That's a couple years ago. Yeah. So they're deciding that they're going to redo this. Somehow, somebody, the geniuses of Hollywood, decided this movie was such a hit that, you know, we needed to bring... I, I, I would love Morgan Freeman to be in the, in the remake, or not the remake, in the sequel or whatever. But they're going to London, and London will now fall. Yes! Take that, London! I thought it's funny that in America we portrayed Olympus as the White House, and for London, all of London will be falling. 
Isn't it a code word or something in that movie? I, I realize now, I, I don't think I saw this one. I think I saw the other one that's a lot like it with Jamie Foxx. <laughs> that one was much better. Really? Huh. Yeah, I like that one. I think this is the one that our friend who has a little bit of military knowledge, uh, she went to saw, see it and it laughed at it. Chachi, uh, uh, let me know which one of those that was in the chat room. Oh, that was probably White House Down. You think it was White House I'd, Down? I'd... I'd, I'd my my dad's an old navy guy, and even I can tell that a lot of that was crap. <laughs> a lot of it was crap. <laughs> but I yeah, think... so um, when they release the trailer, what are the odds that uh the people doing the trailer are going to pull on Avengers and have a real slow, creepy version of London Bridge is falling down? Oh. <laughs> where, where are the odds? I, I'm gonna set the odds at roughly sixty five percent. Okay. It has to happen. <laughs> or we see Big Ben explode for some reason. Like the stereotypical London stuff. But come on, the bridges yeah, have to Yeah, because they don't explode like 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 Big Ben like every other year on Doctor Who already. <laughs> or any other London disaster show, movie, whatever. Or the Millennium Bridge getting twisted like in the Harry Potter movie. There you go. Wow. Um, this is uh, another quick story. Um, I, I did write this up wrong in the in the show notes, but uh, Gotham uh, ratings have taken a bump uh, compared to the other shows that it was going up against on Monday night. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is just playing off the whole just big envelope or umbrella of comic book and superhero type stuff. I like, I don't think so. I th- I think it helped that Big Bang Theory is no longer on Mondays. Oh, you think so? Uh, let's see, because it was going up against CW's. Oh, yeah, shows that I never even heard of. The Voice on NBC, which I mean, they're in season. Who knows what? So yeah, and then Monday Night Football. I think anytime anybody compares football to shows, I think that's just silly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. So you. Oh, I thought, all right, so the big one was they noticed a drop in Blacklist and uh, and, a, and a spike with Gotham, which overtook CBS's Scorpion, another show that I don't watch. Blacklist is good, but I it I could see the dip. Between Blacklist and Gotham, I think I would still watch Gotham first. I have yeah, but I, I'm, I I really think it's due to the Big Bang Theory not being on Mondays anymore because it's only like the past couple weeks mm-hmm. that Gotham's really risen, and although the episodes have been a little bit better, those the past two weeks Big Bang Theory has been back on Thursdays. I don't believe in coincidences, so yeah, no, that's true. Because because if I have a choice to watch Big Bang Theory or Gotham, I'm gonna watch Big Bang Theory because I'm DVRing Gotham because that's only a half hour. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, even um, what's the the Thursday lineup when Community and uh, The Office were on, and then they, well, what's the government? Um, Parts and Rec. Parts and Rec. Parts and Rec got a huge spike whenever they added it to that lineup because it just followed through. But once The Office went off, and then they messed with Community, or I think it was Community that took the tip because those shows got jumbled. But yeah, I, I guess you're right. It it just uh, when it comes to television, it's all about the lineup. So yes, I guess going up against Big Bang Theory. I wasn't one who watched Big Bang Theory, but um, that makes sense. Uh, speaking of other other shows that took interesting dips, like I said before, I don't really care whenever they do comparisons against football. But The Walking Dead, somebody felt that this was a notable thing uh, to post. The Walking Dead outrate uh out outranked Sunday Night Football. Oh wow, that's impressive. That's not that surprising though, isn't it? Because I mean, football is like the the big one that 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 everybody has to take on. Like they're kind of a ratings jugger, juggernaut, aren't they? Yeah, it depends who's playing. Okay, that's a, it's all. That's why I like, agree. It's all the in the Sunday, the Sunday Night game. There was no Peyton Manning. There was no Tom Brady. There was no Cowboys. There was no Giants. Like okay. it's it was Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Like, yeah, which no which offense, matters for us. Markets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure Sunday Night Football killed The Walking Dead in ratings on Sunday in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. but over overall in the country, not many people care about Big Ben's awesome performance. 
Yeah. And that's why like comparisons like this, I think are silly. Yes. If it was a larger market, I probably would agree with that. Or if it was a big name person. And I mean, even uh fancy football players, like I usually will just check. Like I, I didn't, last week's game. I did not watch the whole thing. I just checked on my phone to see what the updated scores were. And plus walking dead's only an hour football stretches to three. So you know, if mm-hmm. if it looks like a blowout game early, which it wasn't, true. but hey, I that, got like, I got an update. Apparently, they had watched both Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down back to back. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, that's intense. Yeah, yeah, and, and Chachi counters that that Ravens versus Steelers is a big deal. Um, both Super Bowl teams, Steelers is a pretty big draw. Uh, because of all the expatriates and, and Ravens, uh, you know, after the few Super Bowl wins and the people they have, and especially the controversy this year, I, I'd say that's that's a pretty big deal. Is that, but I'm agree. I agree with you on the hour to hour, like the three versus one uh, uh, point there, Mike. So I don't know if Baltimore is a draw though. Right now, I would say that they're no, because the Ravens are horrible. The Ravens are horrible right now. Well, I, I would I would say the scandal. Is more the yeah. thing that's kind that of that too. Yeah, yeah. That could turn people, people off to watching Ray Rice jerseys everywhere. <laughs> All right, uh, we got three stories left. I am scratching the WB layoffs. If you want to know about that, WB is laying off people. I think we should talk about maybe either. they should lay off their movie writers, <laughs> like maybe people who do the TV shows, Agents of Shield, or. Um, the the trailer that got released for Avengers that I had not seen. Now I haven't seen this one either. So what's what's going? Well, let's talk Agents of Shield, Shield then, since we haven't seen this trailer. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, are gonna have to go with that because I am so behind with Agents of Shield. Well, okay, I'll, I'll try and not spoil anything then. Um, I can see how the agent how what they're doing on Agents of Shield now is gonna lead into Civil War. Because it's kind of like a U.S. government versus Shield slash Avengers. Like it's kind of pitting everyone against the U.S. government, and I think it's going to end up coming to a head when, in Age of Ultron, when Tony, you know, is the one who creates Ultron and creates worldwide destruction. And I think that's what's really going to bring it into kind of a more focus because Agents of Shield is doing a lot of anti-government stuff, mm-hmm. and it's really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because There's, the government's not sure if they can trust Shield, given that Hydra was growing within them for decades. Uh, they're doing a lot of good back and forth here. Like that, it, it's it, it's a moving target. It seems the entire series, um, what you know, with who's on which side and, and everything, is really kind of keeping you. It's really kind of keeping you hooked. I think. So I know, just in the in the grand scheme of, should I be? caught up with the show or should i catch up you guys have already said yes definitely oh yeah absolutely certainly. make it a priority if or I, i'm not even joking <laughs> if i really like government conspiracies and all this other great stuff i should definitely watch yeah, a little bit of x files too i'd say yeah oh. oh yeah because uh we're definitely getting into that territory oh yeah we are there is an alien and, mystery and tonight uh they're actually showing a marvel special instead of an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so I'm hopeful we're going to get a lot more Age of Ultron stuff out of it that we'll be discussing next week. Mm. Uh, if nothing else, make sure you get like all the recent episodes of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in before whatever the next Marvel movie is, which actually is Avengers, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, so you have until May <laughs> to yeah, watch. Yeah, because uh, so- someone asked um, Jeff Loeb at the uh, Age of Ultron at the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. panel at New York Comic Con if uh, they have to hold off on anything before Age of Ultron. And he just said, it's all connected. So, yeah, catch up before you see Age of Ultron. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's good. I mean, it's definitely good in uh, stringing people along until the next big movie comes I think it's up. great because you don't, like, just forget about it and come back. It's not like it's not like they're, they're dropping a series, and they are doing this too, but... The, good nobody pays attention uh they're not drop they drop a series of uh because they do they do a line in the marvel comics for the cineverse that is like tied into all the movies um uh, comic book wise uh mm-hmm. they're they're not good as typical i, not I will good. say he does that better 
What's incorporating that? The, uh, incorporating the TV shows into comics. Because mm-hmm. like, they have digital directs of Arrow. They're going to have one for Flash. And, of course, they have one for Smallville. And okay. That ties into the shows a hell of a lot better than any of the ones I've seen in Marvel. Because usually it's like, well, we got to do this over here. Like nobody does like heroes used to do where you're going to go read a comic on our website. That is if it, that gives you like the backstory of like, hey, here's this new character. And you're like, oh, my God, I've been reading him for his story for the last two weeks. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it was it was a really nice hand in hand kind of thing that they did there. And whereas, you know, I expect when I you tell me that there's like an arrow digital uh, comic book version um, like it's like well this is the stories that happen in between the episodes you don't see but really don't impact the episode at all yeah. it, it, like uh, I because I went to the DC digital panel at New York Con too and they were like yeah the, the digital books are fun because we can't really shoot Ollie hanging off a plane so mm-hmm. we're going to do it in the comics yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, just real quick I guess um if not, I, I guess we can't get too much into this, but speaking of having to wait till May for the Avengers, the trailer that uh, we did see, I thought the, the intro to that trailer was pretty cool. Uh, all the characters trying to pull on the uh, the hammer of Thor um, and none of them being able to do it. And Thor basically say, this could only mean one thing. You guys are not worthy. And then we see what we've already seen in the previous uh, trailers as it progresses from there. Um, I don't know. Everything about the series, I think, is is just cool. Like, even the way the characters are portrayed is there's, just cool. There's also um, a link I posted on the uh, Rambling Movement Facebook page mm-hmm. that showed uh, a leaked scene between Captain America and Iron Man. Mm. basically setting the seeds for civil war like them just having a conversation after presumably they've gotten their asses handed to them by ultron so it it was really really interesting scene i don't know if the video is still up or if it was pulled but they have uh in that link they have a transcript of what tony and um cap say to each other so yeah i mean you just gotta think like in the grand scheme of stuff right this has to lead to more comic book sales <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do you know how many books uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy have right now or are going to get? Oh, uh, gosh, it just pains me. It'll it's, be really funny how, the, uh... it's really funny how, like, six months ago, people were saying, oh, no one knows who the Guardians of the Galaxy are. That movie's going to tank. And now it's the third highest Marvel movie of all time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And there, you, you, I, can, I can tell, like, I can tell... Uh, I'm getting to the point around when the comic, the, when the movie came out, around the comics, and you're starting to see everything spin out, and you're starting to see all this crossover. They did a crossover with X Men um, a little bit ago to kind of introduce you to them. Uh, it's it's been really interesting to see see them grow, and it's like, wow, we care about these guys now. Um, yeah. After they were just that oddball extra title they had, like Defenders or something. So it's been pretty cool. And that's coming soon too. Oh. That's go- that's gonna be on uh, the Netflix. Oh, that's Defenders. I thought it was gonna be Heroes for Hire. Oh, uh, they're doing they're doing Daredevil first, and they're doing Luke Cage, hmm. then they're doing Iron Fist, and they're doing Jessica Jones, and then they're doing Defenders. Oh, okay. I, I think I got that. I, I... Yep. Um one one last thing. Uh, <clears throat> jumping out of the Marvel universe, uh, Furious Seven trailer. <laughs> that was uh, uh, that was last week. Yep. Uh, I thought it was funny. <clears throat> I watched this trailer and I was like, "This has to be the last one." Uh, I know how it out. ends. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Something bad happens to Paul Walker's character. Oh, jeez. Yeah, uh, there was a, there's a great article. If I find it, I will post it up on our um, group page. That was just talking about like after Vin Diesel and Paul Walker left the series. I think after two. It completely like almost tanked, and mm-hmm. then when they uh, when the Rock joined them and they came back, that's where I think number six made almost a billion dollars. I hadn't watched this yet. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, but, um, cars flying out of planes. Okay, okay, I gotta say. Okay, now, now, so I'm seeing the parachuting scene out of the planes right now. Um, and now, now the worst was when they had the, uh, mine sequence in like four or five, uh, probably, probably four actually, 
um, that was very CG'd, very bad. Like that's where they lost me a little bit. Other than Tokyo Drift as a whole, um, but uh, no, I, I think like they really kind of did a good reboot with like Fast Five. Um, you know, with you know the I don't think I've seen six yet actually. Uh, the, it really kind of became a new series at that point. It feels yeah. To me. I mean, six isn't in the grand in the grand arena of crappiness. Six is actually. Okay. Why can you call this crappiness? This is this doesn't pretend to be anything but somebody called it like car porn or something, like action porn or something. That's what it is. It's people doing ridiculous things with ridiculous cars. That guy's in it now. Um, so I think in its defense, I won't say crappiness. It's just you know, it's a summer movie. Lango, Lango, Lango. Sometimes you just gotta appreciate. This is the movie where I'm gonna go to the theater. I'm gonna see things explode. There's gonna be action that physically doesn't make sense. Maybe mentally a little bit too. But I'm gonna go along for the ride. I'm gonna. Yeah, I agree. But I will say, in six, it's like they decided to do that. And then also make a story that made sense. Oh, it's like it's actually right for this. Oh, is, so. is this like the Captain America two has a plot comment? Kind of. <laughs> I would say if you watch six and you like the first the first one, they kind of bridge that gap. I too. think I really like. It feels like it's it's the Expendables of car movies, uh, <laughs> but but a little better, you know. Like I, I found Expendables three so enjoyable, and and I think this will be too. And I, again, I got to catch up and watch six, but um, that's uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Like just like yeah, they're making more, and I know it's got you know stuff with Paul Walker and everything, but um, you know, credit I, to Marvel that leaked footage has not been pulled down yet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of looking at it right here. I should probably download it so I can watch it later before it gets pulled. So. Yeah. Well, it's, or it's is a, it? It's been up for days. Or is it, it a real leak? They'll probably put it in the uh, the special that's on tonight now, since it's been up online. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because Marvel we, is very intelligent about things, and we do, do like also that. still have until May. Yes, May. It's November. Yeah, May. That's a long way. So, uh, Malengo, let's uh, let's let's talk about what we watched. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I have no idea what I watched. I don't think I watched any movies this week. You know what? I get, well, can I get into it then? I I watched a lot of documentaries this week. Other than the catching up a, a bit with my my Gotham and my Arrow and my Flash, which has all been tremendous, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Even like I caught up with Sleepy Hollow, and that, that's actually you know doing pretty good. It's doing better than I expected it to do. <laughs> to be quite mm. honest, I thought I, I I thought they would maybe have a little bit of trouble here towards towards the end. I, I I do have to say, um, I'm having a little bit of problem between Constantine Grimm and Sleepy Hollow. I did watch sometimes those. I'm not entirely sure what show I'm watching <laughs> sometimes because it, it's very monster of the week. I enjoy uh, all three of them. I, don't get me wrong. I enjoy all three of them for whatever reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does feel like I'm watching the same show. Like I was watching Constantine and I'm like, this feels like a grim or a sleepy hollow episode to me um, with whatever, like that second episode they had with, uh they were in the mining town in pennsylvania and everything yeah. um so like 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 that that's that's how it came off i hope it becomes something bigger like i know we're gonna have an overarching storyline as we do in serialized television like this with the main what, um, what was the what's the comic book I, again i keep hell thinking- blazer Hellblazer. Okay, I kept thinking. Hellblazer. John Constantine is the character. We decide for some reason they they decide that they can't brand Hellblazer on anything on television or movies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. I, you know, so they they I just don't go know why the, anyone on uh, NBC would have a problem with something called Hellblazer. Yeah. They did have a they did have a, a show called Just Shoot Me. So I Hellblazer? don't really see Hellblazer. Am I am I confusing Hellblazer? Hellblazer is the pinhead guy. No Hell. Help laser. You're right. Please I believe. Well, I do get those confused. Um, I do like the homage, or is that the word I'm looking for? I like the reference to the movie for Constantine, even though I know like it wasn't. Um, I guess the movie with uh, Keanu. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I guess that that wasn't totally accurate to the comic books. And the show is supposed to be more accurate. To it's not going to be 100. percent What was the homage? I, I I didn't I didn't catch this. Well, there are some things that um, they they did a better job in the movie. Like uh, 
if you notice in the show, he doesn't smoke at all. And that was a big thing. He was a like a huge chain smoker. Um, and then I think they're going to like play up. Uh, there was something else that I read that the movie like took liberties with that the television show is going to be more accurate to. Mm-hmm. But I like the direction where the show, I do understand what you're saying with, uh, with Grimm. I love where Grimm's going right now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, he's going to get his powers back, yeah. but just where they're going with that. I could definitely see though, where you could, where you could turn on the television 30 minutes into any one of these shows and question, is this Grimm or is this? Now, not to be, to be, to be clear, uh, I'm, I'm pulling up some more. Cause again, I've not read any Hellblazer, John Constantine stuff, but it is John Constantine Hellblazer when they have it on, on the comics, it seems. Um, you know, and, and, and this is something that was part of their Vertigo imprint, which has notoriously been like Sandman and, and uh, uh, V for Vendetta is another one. Uh, what was the other one? Not the, the re, not the replacements. That's Keanu Reeves. Um, but but they're interesting. They've notoriously had these Vertigo titles be uh, completely separate from the DC universe. Uh, with New Fifty Two, they changed that, and Constantine is part of like Batman. You know. Um, well, they they did loop Constantine into the uh, Smallville comics universe. Did they? Which I thought, yes, they did. Nice. Which I thought was really interesting. That's the only John Constantine book I've there, ever read. There is some like if you read early early Sandman, there's a little bit of like there's a little bit of Batman in there, but then they just, like later they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. So <laughs> and, and Constantine, of course, crosses over into Sandman a little bit, but that like it's its own world typically over here, and they don't they just don't intersect at all so anyways I I, it's, it's interesting, interesting. Um, i think it's interesting when you think about like uh i think it was something we talked about last week whenever you compare marvel and dc marvel characters are a lot more like real like you could almost say like these people could exist like these have they have real problems where dc characters always seem so like outlandish and it's weird that like the characters that would seem more real in the dc universe are never really like publicized as high as like Superman or Batman. But I don't know. Like it's just Constantine doesn't have any kind of powers. He just can see crap from the other side. <laughs> and he Oh, fights. I mean that that is kind of an ability. He has magics and all that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because that actually that was that was what I watched this week because I hadn't seen any of it, so I caught up on the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. And it, it's fun. It's it's interesting. I I kind of liken it to Doctor Who meets Supernatural. Hmm. Like that's kind of kind of what I thought it was because I mean he's British and cheeky, and then they go around fighting supernatural monsters and everything like that. So it was interesting. Um, Mad Mike, it looks like you also saw the video game movie. I did. Uh, the one that Sorg watched last week, I watched on his recommendation. Yeah, and yeah it's fun. It was, it, was a it, good, was. it was a good documentary. You're not going to learn anything new, typically, right? Nope. Yeah, pretty much. But it was it was well done. Yeah, it was, it was nice. I loved the uh, the visuals on it. Mm-hmm. The visuals on it were really good. Oh, uh, real quick, Sorg, what is Please Subscribe? Talk about that real quick. Oh, please subscribe. I, I, after I watch video game movie, and this is apparently one, you know, Chachi always tells me these movies to watch when he, like, you know, he's messaging me during the day, and then I forget about them, and then somewhere down in the the, the reaches of my mind, it's a, a, when I do finally come across them on YouTube, it's like his recommendation resurfaces, and I just don't give him credit for it, and then I tell him, hey, you should watch this movie, and he's like, yeah, I told you about it. <laughs> this is a vicious cycle that happens a lot that I've noticed. Um, and this is one of those movies. Uh, it, it, it's uh, although I don't think he had a positive review on it. Now, I, now I recall. Um, but no, it's about YouTubers, um, you know, people on YouTube that are actually doing this, making money, uh, you know, uh, like the drunk. They start with the drunk kitchen lady, mm. girl um and, and talk talk about her and, and what she does. It, it, it's really sectioned like 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 any any. 10 15 minute segment could really just be kind of by itself because they really just kind of like there's this person and they do this and this is how that's affect them uh they have daily grace on there um they have uh, another kid on there like and there's some interesting stories because like the one kid on there was ocd and i think could barely leave the house again he found this thing and now he's kind of famous 
Um, and they show them like when they go to, you know, they're going to a YouTube conference where, where people, the fans of these YouTubers, like, you know, I'm a fan of I Justine and I go to the YouTube conference to go meet I Justine. So of course there's going to be like a hundred adoring fans, you know, around something like this. I don't know if it's like this when they're like walking down the street necessarily, you know, levels of, 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 uh, of fandom. Uh, yeah. but it was really interesting, um, uh, kind of see what kind of personalities are able to do this. Um, I'm starting to think that anybody successful on YouTube in this manner, um, one is not normal. I don't think I don't think anybody in a creative field like this that actually gets success can be. Um, and a lot of times it just kind of happens by accident. You get that viral video and do you follow up, you know? Yeah. And there's some commentary to like, you know, not following up on some of those. Uh, so like, you know, like. You know, but it's, it's really good if you're interested in what that kind of culture is like um i, I definitely recommend to go check it out this is on netflix everything i watch uh, documentary wise and, and so that kicked me on a, a documentary kick in general i watched most of a movie called hot coffee um again starting about like pretty much like the real story of what the hot coffee mcdonald's thing everybody jokes about is and yeah. why that became a thing and I'd why that, everybody's right. like, oh, hot co-. like this, this lady had severe burns that plagued her until she died. And, and it was an older lady like like there was some serious stuff. But they talk about like why, you know, why? Why did this culture of, uh, you know, people uh, suing? yeah, well, not the people suing, but but now they took away all the tort, tort reform and everything. If you even know what that is, I learned. Um you know, and what that did, I did finish this one. Now I think about it. Um, and what that did about taking away people's rights to the court. Uh, really interesting. It's probably really boring. Also watch dear Mr. Watterson, which is actually a documentary about Calvin and Hobbes and the guy that created it. Uh, although he's not in it because one, I think he's passed Two, no, uh, no, no, he's no, not he passed. No, he, no. He, <sighs> oh, thank he's you. No, yeah, he no, he's notorious for never. Yeah. yeah okay. So that I knew, I knew that part um, because another podcast I listened to, Anako Almanac, is a huge fan of his, and he's he's spent an episode or two just talking about who he is and why he's interesting. And I think a lot, you know, around this documentary when he was talking at the time. Um, but so, so those who don't know, he's 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 very anti uh, licensing. I guess selling out, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that's yep. why you don't find a lot of legitimate Calvin and Hobbes merchandise out there. Like a lot of people can't get these stuffed tiger that they want. That's depicted in the, uh, I need comic. stuffed Hobbes. It, exactly. Exactly. And even like the, the, you know, Calvin pissing on things is certainly not licensed. Um, but it's, it's out there. Wait, wait, Sorg. Are you saying that he didn't Purely want his speculation. character? But, the biggest surprise on this is um, um, about hour ten in the movie. A uh, friend of a uh, friend of friend of friend of Pittsburgh, uh, Joe Wos is in it from the Toonsium, uh, formerly of the Toonsium. Mm-hmm. He's actually recently left, and he has a good like two minute spot in there talking about Calvin and Hobbes and how important it was with like you know showing kids reading books over top of it. Like wow, he got a really good spot in this thing. But I was just like yeah. you know casually kind of you know it was, it's on in the background while I was working away, and I'm just like. I know that voice. Uh, for those don't know, uh, Tim and, Zim very, and Joe have been very uh, helpful with us with uh, Chachi plays uh, that we've done for uh, at least the past three years with that. Uh, so, so it was really cool to kind of see, like, I, I know that guy in this document. He's Netflix famous. So, just to put it in perspective, too, uh, talking about selling out, we are we will be having two uh, illustrated car- uh, comic book characters coming to the big screen in a like Popeye and right. Peanuts. Right, right. But but Peanuts is already like like very, very oh, licensed. You can't, you can't sell out Peanuts any more than they've been sold out. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's what, oh, yeah. That's what I, and I gotta say. They, they they do the MetLife commercials for yeah, yeah. So it's MetLife Field. You go to MetLife Disney. Field, there's a giant Snoopy and they got like yeah. they got Lucy with the football and you can take a picture like you're trying to kick it and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you hit the right button, she pulls it away. There's a yeah. button? No. <laughs> we, we've also already had Dennis the Menace and uh, Garfield. Yeah. We've had multiple versions of Garfield. Oh, so. Garfield was uh, both Garfield and Snoopy were like the notorious 
like, well, they did this and look what happened, you know, kind of thing. And not always great. So I thought I remember seeing a Garfield calendar where all the Mondays were taken off of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Garfield. Um, all right. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, there's this is a huge weekend. I think it's a huge weekend um, in the box office. We haven't had one of these in a while. Uh, Big Hero 6 right Oof. now sitting at a 93% on Rotten Tomato, uh, going up against uh, Interstellar at 74%. Both of these movies are probably going to be huge. It's just a dependence of do the kids get rain over the parents or do parents say, stay home, we're going to go watch this movie. Like, I, I, I think Interstellar is probably going to do more money because it will be an IMAX. Mm-hmm. But I think Big Hero 6 will have longer staying power into Christmas. Be I, I, that's that's what I'm thinking. I think I think Interstellar is going to be very similar to Gravity. Yeah, that's what people are saying. They're saying they, that it's playing up on the um, people's like those those very st- stereotypical strings, heartstrings of like just emotion and I guess death, life, all the you know all the things that Gravity was able to somehow pull out of it, and that's why they think general public. It's just going to, like, love this. But I am just envisioning Disney's good success with their last two movies with Wreck-It Ralph. And uh, I can't remember the other big one. Frozen? But I loved Wreck-It Ralph. Frozen? And, uh, frozen, yeah. Was it Frozen? Yeah, yeah it, it's Frozen. It, it's Frozen. Trust me. Frozen, a little bit of a success. A little bit. Do you group Frozen, though, with, with this? Because yeah. I mean, I say this is more like Wreck It Ralph. Well, no, Frozen, Frozen, and Wreck It Ralph were Disney animation, not Pixar. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm yeah, that, that, that's that's why they're that's why they're grouped in. Okay, so that's why that's we're grouping them in because yeah. I don't know if we group them in with the same drama. Oh, so, well, if anything, this is more like Incredibles rather than Wreck It Ralph. All right, there we go. Yeah, because we could we could say that Frozen would definitely play more on Disney's origin original whatever originality. Of yes, it's not 2D, but that family fairy tale, blah 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 blah. But yes, I don't know. This weekend's going to be huge. I want to see both of these movies. Uh, one of my coworkers said he's somehow going to see both of these movies. As of right now, I'm slated to see Big Hero Six on Friday. If I see Interstellar on Saturday, I don't know. I'm going to try try so hard to find some time to watch Big Hero Six, but I I, I can't see it with my schedule. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. I, I want to see it really bad. Yeah, uh, I'm seeing Big Hero Six on Saturday. That is the current plan. I have no desire to see Interstellar. <laughs> Not I in have theater. No desire at all. I don't need to see Matthew McConaughey driving his Lincoln Continental spaceship to a new planet. <laughs> I don't need to do it. <laughs> Everything Lincoln. That's right. Um. Yeah, Mike, do we have anything to plug? Uh, Sorg, do we have anything to plug? Well, PodCamp Pittsburgh is coming up. PodCampPittsburgh.com if you're in the area. Uh, November 22nd through 23rd with a big pre-party happening out at the Ikea and Robinson Town Center. Uh, uh, so, And, of course, we'll be there uh, for the free presentations. If you want to learn about p- podcasting, social media, and it will be streaming online services by us here at Sorgatron Media, actually. Uh, so uh, please check that out. Register if you're in the area. And uh, tune in or just follow the Twitter accounts and the Facebook to kind of keep up on everything going on again everything should be online in some manner uh after the event so uh go check that out nice and uh where can we find find you sorg i'm over at sorgatron.com where i'm doing the good morning podcast um as well as sorgatronmedia.com for everything else and if you want to buy some wrestling dvds you can go to pittsburghwrestling.com that's a pretty cool place mad mike uh, well, you can find me on the Twitter machines at MadMike4883. And also, if you happen to listen to Kevin Smith's Batman on Batman podcast, which I'm sure some people who listen to this do, um, the guy that screamed out at the Lego Batman 3 panel, that's me. Um, I just thought it was funny because I listened to it this past weekend. And yes, I definitely come across on the audio because I have a really loud, booming voice. <laughs> nice and you can find me on twitter at rambling mango also uh definitely check out our facebook group 
um, where we like to throw up random stuff and discuss them. Uh, that's a great place to stay connected with the show. Uh, with that, have a uh, until next week, have a great rambling movie weekend and interstellar it. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, with Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. What the shit? What is that? What was that? What are you doing? Why are you doing Vogue? Until next week, have a rambling movie weekend. I like I did one of those uh, dyslexic things where I read the words in front. So I, I was like, until next week. Yeah. Nah. It's okay. Uh,